So this is the Life Fan S1. Now you've probably never heard of Life Fan. I had it until recently. Well, they're another electronics company from China. And this right here is a 13.3 inch Core M fanless notebook with a 2K screen, 8 gigabytes of RAM and a user replaceable SSD. So let's have a look at it in greater detail. So weighing just under 1.2 kilos, it's thin and it's light and very portable. Top is made out of aluminium. The bottom is aluminium. The only plastic is the palm rest. You see the design there, quite slim. Here we have a USB 3 port, USB type C that can power both of these ports, external hard drives. This also doubles as a charging port. Here is a DC in for charging with the included power adapter. And on the right side here, you'll see a micro HDMI, USB 2 port, and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So the build of the S1 feels quite good. There's a little bit of flex there in the lid pressing down there, but overall I'd rate this as having quite a premium build quality to it. Even though the palm rest here is made out of plastic, it's not bad. Now the color gold, that's not going to be for everyone, but that's unfortunately the only color that it comes in is that champagne gold color. Now the keyboard being 13.3 inches, we have plenty of space here. We've got a lot of function keys along there, media controls, via the function key, home up and down, page up and down, end, screen and volume controls, all the usual stuff you see on here. So the keyboard has a little bit of flex, but not too bad. I'm pushing down very hard now at the moment, and I do find that uh, typing on it is really good. No problems whatsoever with it. It has 1.3 millimeters of travel, good spacing of the keys. My only complaints would be that the arrow keys aren't as good as the rest of the keys. Luckily, I don't use the arrow keys so much, but I just noticed that uh, these two ones here, they don't actually sit flush and level as they should, but they're perfectly fine. They are usable, they do work. It's just they don't feel up to the rest of the keyboard. Now, the touchpad has a good size to it, good accuracy. I haven't had any problems with it, but I don't particularly like the way the left and right mouse button uh, how it sort of sticks down a little bit there. I feel like it's a little bit too deep. The clicks should be a little bit more shallow. But that's my own personal preference there. So the surface is textured. It has a matte finish to it. And not like those glass covered ones that feel real nice. But other than that, it serves the purpose. It works really well and the accuracy of it isn't bad. So the screen the S1 has here is a sharp unit and it's a TFT panel and it outputs 420 lumens of brightness so it can get very bright and then it dims down to a low 5 lumens which is good for nighttime use. So it has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and it looks sharp, it has good colors. Now being a TF panel that when you do move the screen around, I will just quickly show you that if you move it to the left and the right, you'll see that colors tend to shift out a little bit, but it's not as bad as some of those other TF panels they have seen. This one isn't, isn't really that bad at all when it comes to that, the problems you see with shifting the colors and vertical horizontal as well, not bad at all. And the colors that it does have, very good. Deep blacks, that red is oversaturated there, but that is the actual photo. This was taken on a Samsung Galaxy Note 4 that tends to do that with the colors. But a very good panel. This panel really is what makes this notebook. You can see here outdoors, you can still use it without having any problems of glare reflecting all over the place and causing eye strain. So my S1 shipped with the 128 gigabyte option for the SSD, and that came with Windows 10 Pro, and it has activated and it also has eight gigabytes of RAM. Now you don't normally see that on Core M devices. Core M devices normally only have about four gigabytes of RAM like the Surface Pro 4, the M3 one. And that gives us a lot more room. Now, four gigabytes of RAM doesn't actually increase the performance really. It just allows us to do more. So you can run more memory intensive applications. For example, like Chrome that eats up a lot of memory. Well, I've got Chrome and Edge open at the moment doing a little bit of multitasking, I have a few tabs there, and I have only used 33% of the memory, which is quite good. Now, benchmarks I have run, so that SSD, mine is a Kingston, and these are the speeds I got there. So those speeds are actually okay for a SATA 3 unit, 128 gigabyte one. That's not bad, the 4Ks are good. Write speeds, if you get the higher models, the higher capacity ones, then you will see higher writes there. So benchmarks I did run on this unit. I ran through the typical benchmarks I like to go through. So here is a benchmark Geekbench 4, the new version. Now that score 
isn't too bad. That's about what a Core M will get. So a little slower than the newer Core M3s, which get about 2,400 single core and about 4,800 multi. And here's the CloudGate 1.1 score. I still miss stream 1.2. Now this should be a lot higher. This should be about 40,000. Now the reason why it isn't 40,000 is because this notebook gets quite warm and runs into what's called thermal throttling. Now that affects the performance. It gets up to 90, 93 degrees and the clocks will lower down and that affects mostly happens with gaming. So if you're going to game on this machine, I wouldn't really recommend it because the performance is going to be affected by that thermal throttling. Here's a PC Mark 7 score and finally the last benchmark that I did run was Pass Mark. This is Pass Mark 8 and that was 1658 the score there. So besides gaming I find the performance is really good so opening up Windows, using Edge, moving around, browsing to different websites, Everything is loading in quick thanks to that wireless AC. Now the wireless range and speeds I've been finding are perfect. There's nothing wrong with the wireless on this. It works quite well because it does have dual band AC. So if you do have a 5 gigahertz router, then you can set it to that and that will help with the speeds because you also have less interference from other devices. But yes, wireless is good. Bluetooth also works quite well. No complaints there. So the notebook has two downward firing speakers located just here in the front. I'm going to turn the volume right up now and we'll have a listen to how it sounds. Okay, the volume output on them is okay, but they do lack a lot of bass and they sound quite tinny. They're not the greatest sounding speakers you will hear in a laptop. So let's have a look at how it games now. So I have Fraps running. You can see the frames per second right up there in the top upper left. And I'll also show you just the settings I'm going to use now. This is Half-Life Lost Coast. So I'm going with the recommended settings. So it's 1920 by 1080. And the advanced I'll show you quickly, hopefully that is coming out on camera. So everything's recommended there. So high texture detail, high model detail, high shaded detail. Let's see how it performs. I would love to show you League of Legends, but every time I try to launch it, for some reason it crashes, so the servers are down or something's going on. Crashes and fails to load, so sorry about that, but that game will definitely be playable on this with low settings, 1080p. Won't be a problem for the Core M. So the next time I'm going to look at is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So I'll show you the settings I'm going to use. So 1080p all on the lowest settings. So let's look and see how this performs. At the moment, its frame rate is about 50. It doesn't seem too bad. It looks really good on the screen too. Oh, I can hardly aim properly. So here we can see the thermals, that this is not good at all. So it got up to 92 degrees, this is gaming, and thermal throttling did occur there. So that's something we don't want to see. That is going to affect the performance because the clock rate rates will drop down. So after that little bit of gaming there, just how hot did it get? You can feel it's quite warm on the top. So it's 38 degrees. So it's around 38 degrees max on the rear, almost 40 there. So it does get quite warm because this is a passively cooled notebook. There is no fan in here. So here's where the user replaceable SSD is. Now this is something you don't normally see on notebooks and it's really good they haven't included this. So all you need to do is remove the screw on the back, lift up the metal flap and you can see my unit has a pre-installed 22mm by 60mm SATA 3 M2 SSD. So to quickly recap my findings here, the performance of it is good if you're not gaming. That's when you run into some thermal throttling 
and it will get up to 93 degrees and quite hot there. Having the Type-C put on there is good, even though they don't include a charger for it, you just have the standard DC. Battery life isn't too bad, you can get 7 hours with light use, heavy to medium use about 5 to 6 hours, and gaming only about 3 to 4 hours, so that isn't really the greatest. Build quality is good, it's nice and thin, it's light. The main thing I like about it is the matte anti-glare coated 2K screen is what really makes this notebook. It is very nice, great to use in brightly lit environments. You can even use this in direct sunlight and still make out what is on the screen. Something you can't do with those glossy displays there. Thank you so much for watching this review and hopefully I will see you back on the channel soon. Bye for now.